Alicia, you can. Good evening, everybody. I'm delighted to welcome you to this meeting of Singapore International Dynamic Speakers. We are a wonderful, friendly and accomplished group. I hope you will have a fantastic, fabulous and funny Friday. We have a short, succinct but packed meeting starting with a wonderful workshop by CJ. And we are going to have speeches, evaluations and table topics. Our theme this evening is legends. Now, the living legend or the legend in her own lifetime was originally Florence Nightingale, the lady with the lamp. But those of you in Singapore will know our living legend and our legend, Lee Kuan Yew. Now let's hear from some of our role players to hear how they will be supporting us. Let me first of all introduce our timer because he is going to ensure that we run on time or rather she is going to ensure we run on time. Lee Chui Ling from Hong Kong North. She's a mother of three. Her sister encouraged her to join Toastmasters to improve her English and confidence. And she loves brisk walking and brisk talking. And she likes traveling and taking photos. Over to you. Hello Toastmasters, thank you for inviting me to your club to the, tonight. Tonight I will be helping in the role of timer and to keep track of your time. So be in time and I will try to do a good job for tonight. Thank you very much. Back to you Toastmaster of the day. And I'm going to introduce the other role holders and then go on to the president's opening address. Our hour counter is Jenny Lim, whose friends call her hot mama. Jennifer Lim, sorry, not Jenny. Ah, Jennifer Lim. She likes reading to gain knowledge, singing to improve her vocal variety and dancing to keep fit. She lives by the motto that happiness is the key to good health and nothing matters more than happiness. So long as she's happy, everything else falls into place. And the R counters are going to fall into place too. Very quickly, Jennifer, anything else you need to say? About yes. What? yes, thank you. Good evening, uh, Club President, our distinguished guests and fellow Toastmasters. Thank you for, for coming, the guests as well. Well, as a art counter, the purpose of my role is to note words and sounds that are used as a crutch or postilla by anyone who speaks. During the meeting, I will listen for overused words, including and, well, but, so, and you know, I will also listen for filler words, including ah, uh, um, and er. Uh. I will also note when the speaker repeats a word or phrase, such as I, I, or this means, this means. At the end of the meeting, I will report the number of times that each speaker used this expression. So fellow Toastmaster, try your very best not to use these words on a wet, wet, wet Friday night. <laughs> Thank you. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Later on, we will come to table topics by Patricia Tay. Can you give us a wave, Patricia? Sorry, Angela. It's me, table topic. Master ah, today. Peter. Right. That's why Patricia's not waving. Sorry. You're in a new role. 
Peter, tell us very quickly about your table topics. Today's table topic will correlate to Chan Jing's workshop, Tail Talk, uh, sorry, Tall Tales. So hopefully I have prepared a few topic. So hopefully you can enjoy the topic. Right. And over to you, Angela. Good. Now, before we go on to any further, we're going to stop for a moment to contemplate with our opening address by the president. Over to you, Alicia. Thank you, Toastmaster of the Day, Angela Lansbury. One thing that many of us have in common is the kind of stories we read and heard growing up. This triggers flashbacks to my favorite childhood books. And my favorite was given by my auntie as a Christmas present, this big book of 1,000 stories. I'm sure many of these stories were fairy tales about larger than life characters accomplishing incredible feats. Now, if any one of you out there were just like me, then you might have been a fan of Tall Tales. So I'd like to welcome all the fans of Tall Tales here, whether you heard it or not. Please. Welcome our speaker who will be doing a workshop on tall tales and hope you learn something about it and you can practice the tall tales in our table topic segment later. And you'll even be treated to a speaker who will be speaking on a speech on tall tales. Without much ado, back to you, Toastmaster of the Day, Angela Lansbury. Thank you very much, wonderful President Alicia who keeps everything going. Now, we haven't spoken yet to the newcomers. I see some new faces. I see Elvin. Can you give us a wave and unmute Elvin? Can you also unmute all the other newcomers? Elvin, where are you from? I'm from Saudi. Ah, <laughs> wonderful. How well, can we get someone from Saudi? That's beautiful. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Hello. You'll have a chance to speak more later in table topics. Okay. Now, I'll who try. else is new? I, where's Rachi Devi? Is that how you pronounce your name? Can you unmute and give us a wave? And Sneha, can you unmute and give us a wave? Any other Wait. newcomers? Okay. That's it. The newcomers are not giving us a wave. Hello. Ah, yes, we've got one. Hello, Hello Sneha, where are you from? Which country? Um, I'm from India. Lovely. Where in India? I'm West Bengal, Darjeeling. Ah, thank you. Excellent. Thank I see you. lots of people waving their hands. They're delighted to see you here. And you can speak, of course, later on in topics. Sabia Magsud, am I getting that right? Or can you correct yeah. me? Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Canada. Canada, oh, lovely. Another English speaker with British English or yeah. French English or both. The Canadians yeah. are all bilingual, very clever people. Who else do we have? Do I see, is there anyone else who's unmuted and wants to speak, give a wave? Uh, where's our grammarian? Can you give a wave? <laughs> Celine. Hi, think, Angela. Hi, Celine. Celine was a teacher in her past life, a president in her past life, a lady of many <laughs> parts. And she's going to give us the word of the day and tell us why we should watch out for her later. Over to you, Celine. Thank you, Angela. I'm now in the present. I've been resurrected. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, word of the day. Incredible. Is it incredible? 
that we're all together here. Isn't it incredible that we've got visitors from far off flung places like Dubai and Canada and India? That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, so incredible is like unbelievable, astonishing. Use it as an adjective, right? He gave an incredible explanation of, of the expedition. Or use it as an adverb. Incredible easy, incredibly wonderful. So my friends have fun with it. Um, just for the sake of newcomers, my role is to listen to you guys and uh, pick up little nuggets of uh, creative use of language, fantastic use of language, and, and also to point out awkward use of language. And I will see you guys again at the end of the meeting. Over to you, Angela. Thank you very much, Celine. Celine, would you kindly put the word of the day in the chat to remind everybody? And Table Topics Master, can you remind everyone later on, each speaker should remember the word of the day and pin the timer. timer sure, no problem. Timer, give us a wave. And CJ Lim should be fixing the timer. How long is our session going to be? Well, let me introduce CJ. He is a polyglot who is passionate about other people's cultures. And he's going to lead us into tall tales. He'll tell us what a tall tale is. Over to you, CJ. Thank you to the incredible Toastmaster of the day. <laughs> Fantastic Friday, Club President, fellow Toastmaster, and distinguished guests. We are back to school today. Isn't it incredible? Today, I will share with you the secret of Todd Hills. This is an introduction about me. I'm an IT manager for the past 20 years. And for the last year, I took part in the Toapayo Central CC Toastmaster Club Tortue Contest. And I, and I was placed first runner up. I'm the Toastmaster of three years and currently the president of Raffles Singapore and Mountbatten Toastmaster Club. And I'm the secretary for Singapore International Dynamic Speakers Club. What is a tortue? I will share with you four secrets. The elements of a tortue, tips for my experience, and how to start generating ideas for your speech. Type in why in the chat box if you want to know how to be a champion in Todd Hills, type in the letter Y in the chat box now. Oh, we have so many people. We have Angela, Jennifer, Patricia, Lee, Stina, Celine. Whoa, so many people are so excited about Todd Hills. And first, let us relax and watch the secret and the champion taught you. Let us enjoy the video. Our next competitor, Stefano Casalter. The gift, the gift, Stefano Casalter. My Italian grandmother, my Nona, always used to say, it's better to give than it is to receive. Mr. Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and all the welcome guests, I've got some bad news. My Nona recently passed away. No, no, it's okay. She lived a long life. She was 189 years old. 
the reason she lives so long is she's such a religious lady. She get dressed up in her black dress and every single day walk to church 20 miles uphill <laughs> in the snow. <laughs> and that's where she'd pray for my soul because she didn't like the choices I was making in life. And she was always pointing out my imperfections. Stefano, you're too skinny. <laughs> Stefano, when are you going to get married? <laughs> Stefano, when are you going to have a good children? <laughs> Stefano, now you're too fat. Now you're too skinny. <laughs> there was a constant circle of criticism that I could never escape. <laughs> but I love my Nona. Before she died, I visited her in the hospital. And she gave me a little envelope and said, Stefano, take it this gift and wear it so I could be with you for always. Okay, no, and I can do that. You know, I didn't think much of it until today, before the contest. I opened up the envelope, and inside was a gold necklace. I thought, wow, isn't this lucky? This is going to be my good luck charm for the contest. As I put it on, I did the clasp up, and something happened. All the lights went out in the house. I felt a cold chill rack my body, and then bam, right before me, 12 feet tall, bathed in the holy light, and a black dress. <laughs> it was Nona. <laughs> Stefano, now I know you've been a bad, a bad boy. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Here was Nona back to criticize me from beyond the grave. <laughs> Stefano, you dad, like this, like... I, I smell the devil weed on you. <laughs> Deep marijuana. <laughs> but Nona, I, I got a ride earlier from Gene Vickers. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was medicinal. <laughs> for growing hair. And your body is at the temple. You've been defiling your temple. <laughs> no, not only, only. McDonald's has the Angry Angus Burger on the sale. I only had six. <laughs> not to mention, I just got out of the car with Gene Vickers. <laughs> Come on, Stefano. And you've been having the impure thoughts about someone other than your wife. <laughs> but no, not how can. How can you resist Sharuk Olawala in a dress? <laughs> come on, Stefano. You know this to me your whole life. Now I'm going to show you what's to come. She reached down with her big hand to grab my arm and pulled me down, down, down. When I opened my eyes, I was on a rocky outcrop. Where was I? Looking down below, I saw a sea of lava and molten magma. Inside, there were bodies reaching out, screaming and writhing. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's Charles Manson, the serial killer. There's, there's Gene Baker smoking devil bean. <laughs> <laughs> the entire membership of Rocky Point Toastmasters. <laughs> I realized that there was a big puff of smoke beside me. And there standing there was the devil himself, Donald Trump. <laughs> Stefano, you're fired! He pointed his trident at me. Flames leapt from the top and struck me in the back. I was on fire! <laughs> jacket's not on fire. I was back in my room. I ripped the necklace off in the struggle. Was it the necklace or just my imagination? I don't know, but I'm not eating one of Gene Vickers' brownies anymore. <laughs> I wasn't taking any chances. I put that in the envelope and on the way, I waited the contest, I went to the mailbox. 
because it is better to give than it is receive. <laughs> <laughs> to Gene Vickers, enjoy. <laughs> Love, Stephanie. <laughs> 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 Incredible speaker, don't you think so? This is this is the tortoise contest, the tortoise champion, and this is the judge guide and ballot. For the speech development, we have thirty percent. For the delivery, it will be fifty five percent, and for the language, it will be fifteen percent. Now I want you to type in the chat box, what do you think is a Tortu champion. What has he done well in order to be a champion for Tortues? Type in the chat box now. Oh, Peter said funny. Yes. Humorous, isn't it? Exaggeration, Lee. Yes. He exaggerates a lot. Yeah, Jennifer said, incredible story. Yes, it's so incredible. And Angela said, it's ridiculous, but sort of real. We have Kanan say, humor, exaggeration, and good delivery. Yes, these are all the tips to be a champion in tortoise. And our club is having a tortoise contest end of this month. So join us and take part in the fun. Lesson one, what is a tall tale? A tall tale is a story with unbelievable elements related as if it were true and factual, a greatly exaggerated story. The Toastmaster tall tale speech contest requires speeches to be three to five minutes in length. So take note of the timing, three minutes, four minutes, and five minutes. Why tortoise are good for you? It will enhance your confidence, vocabulary, storytelling, communication skills, creativity, and memory. Lesson two, there are three elements of a tortoise. Number one, a story with unbelievable elements related as if it were true and factual. So you can imagine the wildest moment. You can imagine the incredible stories that you can imagine with your creativity. Second, exaggeration of events. Later, I will give you all some exercise to practice on this. And third, which is humor. Humor is a must in torture to make people laugh. And this is a ha-ha curve. A joke is made up of setup plus the punch line. Not every line you say need to be hilariously funny. You need the small aha to build momentum towards the bigger ha-ha. You can set up a mini punch line and at the center of your speech, you can go with a climax, bring us on a roller coaster ride up and down. And if you like, you can end it with a climax at the end too. Later, we'll have some practice on this. There are nine different types of humor for the stand-up comedy. For, I would like to share with you the top three. First is the slapstick humor, which is physical. You can use exaggeration, use your body movement, and your, by showing your facial expression like a crown. Or you can even fall down by slipping on a banana skin and you fall down. This is slapstick humor. Second is the self deprecating humor. This is the easiest. 
You just have to make fun of yourself, putting yourself fun. And third is the surreal, which is the web and illogical events. For this humorous, we will conduct a humorous workshop for our members to describe more about the different humors we will use. And, and, and other kinds of humors include the improvisation, week or workplay, topical, observational, bodily, and dark humor. Next, we'll have a video, a short video on the humor. Let's and sit back and enjoy the video and laugh. They can listen to me, listen to me. Like, like I do this all the time. And if I go out at the, at the house with the door, Matthew has his toys. And then Matthew has all his toys. Okay. But I have to yell at you guys. Okay, Linda, Linda, listen, 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 you... listen, listen, Linda, listen. Okay, what? Like everything they do at this house, it can touch everything at Grandma's house. Okay. Okay, then what? Then you're not listening to me. Then you're not listening to me. I asked you not to do something. Linda, but listen to me. Look at if we do something, if you get that out, that bird thing off, you're gonna break it. Okay, but I'm asking. I'm letting you know but that you cannot. You know, Linda, no, Linda, I'm. Li look at, look at. You're not listening to me. Linda, listen to me now. Look at, look listen to me listen now. To, listen to me. No, you're not listening. I said no cupcakes, and you try to get cupcakes, and you try to ask grandma. Linda, Didn't you? Linda, lick it, lick it, lick it. If we do something right out this, if we, if we get close enough, you can't even get them. You're going to burn your butt. Come What's going to burn your butt? Linda. You and Kevin don't listen. So I have to give both of you guys pop pals in your butt. But Linda, but Grandpa's but uh, going to give you pop pals in your butt. No, he's not. Yeah. I have to, you want, you don't want me to hit Kevin or you don't want me to spank you? No. Why? Because anybody oh, wants to spank me. Then I have to spank Kevin. But he's, but he's my little pop-ups. He's your little pop-ups, but he doesn't listen. But Linda, honey, honey, look at, look at this. Right oh, now, they can't do anything oh, if we can't get everything out of the wall. Oh, if we're going to break everything down. I'm not breaking anything down. I'm just letting you know Linda, you cannot it, have it, cupcakes it, for dinner. It, Linda. Linda, I just think I never belong to you. Anything, you can't get anything and anything and anything. I'm done arguing with you. I'm done arguing with you. You need to listen to the things that I say because I'm the mom and I'm the dog. Linda, look at, listen to me. All the time you get them to, to, to stink, to, to, to stink, but they can't. Can't I'm can't done break. arguing with you. Linda, I'm done arguing with you. Oh, Isn't it incredible? A small boy, which is so humorous. Some questions that might be running through your mind. First, what am I going to talk about? You can talk about anything in your wildest imagination. Second, where do I start? Yeah, you must start. Start writing now. Where am I going to get inspiration from? Yes. Maybe in your dreams, you can imagine. This is normal because the scope of tall tales is limitless. It goes beyond the realm of reality. It can include elements that are factual and unbelievable. Lesson three, tips from experience. Share your unfinished work with others. First, overcome procrastination and perfectionism. You must start, start writing now. In order to prepare for the contest at the end of the month, stop procrastinating and start writing your story now, bit by bit, a little, little by little. Second, get feedback to put you on the right track. Yeah, you can get a buddy or a partner to, and share your story with them and see how they laugh to it. Third, 
include others in your brainstorming process. Yes, the more we brainstorm, the more people we have, the more ideas we generate. Four, people listen to smaller piece of ideas. Lesson four, exercises to start generating ideas. Exercise one, get out of your head. First, you have to pick one random topic. Second, brainstorm for two minutes on a tall tale you can come up with based on the topic. Third, present the tall tale to yourself for one to two minutes in front of the mirror or a friend or family member. You can even record it down, video, and see how you present your speech. Four, repeat this exercise as necessary. Exercise two, put your dreams to work. Dreams, what is D? D is for decide. The night before, make a conscious decision that you are going to recall your dreams, your beautiful dreams, your incredible dreams, your unbelievable dreams. If you set the intention, your chances improve dramatically. R. R is for record. Keep a pen and paper by your bedside or even have a recording app readily available on your phone. As soon as you wake up, record any remembrance of your dreams. E is for your eyes. Keep your eyes closed right after you awaken. Dreams can disappear within minutes. And if you keep your eyes closed, this will help you reflect. A is for affirm. Before you go to sleep, affirm that you are going to remember your dreams. Because affirmation is a critical tool in accomplishment. M is for manage. For lots of reasons, but here for the sake of remembering your dreams, it's important to manage your dreams, sleep and establish good sleep routines. And S is for share. Talk about your dreams with others. When you do so, you share with them and you develop the routine of tapping into your dreams and sharing with others. So remember this acronym, DREAMS, D-R-E-A-M-S. And now it's for practicing time. We should get some speaker and to practice. Can I have Peter first to try this? Peter, can you read out this sentence? I went fishing and that fish was so big. It's nearly sent a boat when I put it out. Yes, this is the exaggeration we need. The fish was so big, it nearly sunk my boat. <laughs> yes, this is the tortoise example. Second, can I have can I have someone to try? Patricia, would you like to try the magic lab? Sure. I rub the magic lamp and a humongous 12-foot genie appeared right in front of me. Wow, isn't it incredible? It's a 12-foot genie. So tall, we have to look up to the genie. And next, can we have Jennifer? Jennifer, our VP education, to say this. In the circus, the lions are breathing fire on me. This is how I became a redhead. Yes, let your imagination run. Wow, breathe fire. The lions can breathe fire on you. That is why I become a red head. Okay, next I will like Lee. Lee with Lee, our VP membership. 
Lee Buckley, are you there? Yes, I am, CJ. Yes. <laughs> I was racing in my Ferrari car and it crossed the line in the first place. And then someone tapped on my shoulder and I realized that I was in an arcade. <laughs> yes, thank you, Lee. This is the secret that Lee shared with me. In the end of your story, you can give it a twist. For this case, you realize somebody was tapping on the shoulder. And when you wake up, oh no, I was in the arcade. This is the secret of tortilles. Give it a twist in the end. And this is my contact. And you can contact me if you have any questions about tortilles. And I will most likely be sharing the answer with you. I would like to leave you with a quote, a flavor quote of mine, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So ladies and gentlemen, before you go to bed today, can you take out a pen and paper to write down on your notebook how your story of tortue is going to be. Write down a little word by little word, a little a day, which will make a story in one week. Isn't it unbelievable? Isn't it incredible? Isn't it amazing that you yourself have a story, a tortue story to share with the rest of us? And I would love to hear your story. And now comes to the question and answer. Do we have time for this question and answer, Toastmaster of the day? Do we have time for some Q and A? I must uh, consult Angela? the timer. Timer, can you tell us? Choiling is the timer. I, I would suggest if there are any questions, you can just type on the uh, Zoom chat and uh, CJ Lim will reply. Yes, sure. You all can type in the chat box yes. and I will reply to your question. And over to you, Angela. Thank you. I would like a round of applause for that wonderful explanation of Tall Tales. That was brilliant. He gave us examples of the top Tall Tales, the winners, and he gave us how to do it ourselves and encouraged us to do it. What more could you want from an educational session? Thank you so much. Now, Am I right in thinking we're going on to table topics? Can I consult with Jennifer, who seems to be the god of the meeting? Yes. Table yeah. topics. Table topics. Because for those of you who don't know, we've shortened our program so we can all go to bed earlier. And now we have table topics. I'm really looking forward to this. And I believe that our magic a magic table topics man is going to tell us about table topics and first very briefly we'd like to know about the timing and those who are new to table topics how do you construct a table topic and don't forget everybody pin the timer and remember the incredible word incredible over to you peter thank you angela for and thanks, CJ, for the incredible workshop. Hope everyone, everyone, every of our members and guests able to learn some from it. So let me do some info for today's table topic. And this is a difference what we do previously. First, on this table topic, I need five volunteers for today's session. Second, I will start the table topic with an opening story 
and you are required to expand the storyline as you want. And the next participant will continue your story and so on. Furthermore, whoever become the last participant have the right to decide the ending of the story. Remember, Tall Tales is a story with unbelievable element related as if it were true or and factual. So use your imaginations and creativity to develop, the, to develop the story. So as we learn from CJ, we need two minutes brainstorm for your thought tale. Before I continue to do further introductions and introduce the timer and the words of the day. So let me share my screen so that you have two minutes to develop your story. Do you see my screen? Yes, we can see. Okay, let me play some of the video and go to the table topic today. <laughs> so let me open with a story. So let me start to brief it now. Once upon a time, there is a handsome boy called Peter who hates vegetable. One night when they're having dinner, Peter says to his mom, why do you put vegetable on my table, on my plate? You know I hate them. So instead of eating, Peter trash it in the dustbin at midnight. Peter was awake by a harper sound inside the dustbin. When Peter looks inside the dustbin and seeing all the vegetable trash by him, it came to life. So continue. You may feel free to think how you're gonna explain your story today. So before we start the table topic, I would like to introduce our timer. Our timer uh, is Choi Ling. She will assist us for the time speech timing. Each speaker is required to speak for one to two minutes. Choi Ling, are you there? So it's speaker, and then for your paper topics, you can have. Um... Sorry, Choi Ling. So um, once you start your speech, trailing will indicate blue. And when you reach the allocated one minute, trailing will flash green on his screen. Yellow, when you reach one and 30 minutes, uh, one minute, 30 seconds. Red, when you reach two minutes. And you are required to wrap up your story between 30 seconds. Each speaker are inquired to you words of the day in your speech. Today was is incredible. Before I hand over to participants, let me remind again our speaker to team the timer before you start your, your speech. Without further ado, let's start our table topic today. Do we have any volunteer? Who gonna volunteer first? Don't worry, you can feel free to expand the story. The story can be futuristic, can be a sad story, a happy ending story, even a horror story if you want. So do you, do you, I didn't see any volunteer yet. Do we have some? How about, how about Sandy? Sandy's 
Chen, Sandy. <laughs> Would you like to try, Sandy? Don't worry. We encourage guests to join this table topic session. They do not have any right and wrong. Don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, it's a bit hard for me. Uh, okay, let me try. Um, so, timer is ready. Uh, speaker, are you ready? So that timer can start to time your speech. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't laugh at you, Sandy. Don't worry. Okay, um, now it's just past midnight and I'm being left over in the trash, but I would like to see somebody who threw me there. I think the one who threw me there was called Peter. I am a delicious vegetables. I'm a broccoli or something. I was fresh. I was full of vitamins. I was full of energy for human beings. Now it's past midnight. I don't believe that such a gentleman who requires lots of nutrition in his life has thrown me in the garbage in the trash can. And I wanted to find him. I want to find him. I want to go directly through his brain. I want to see what's inside. I want to see what's inside that throw me into the trash can without eating me alive. I'm a veg I'm a broccoli that full of the vitamins to the human beings. So I cannot really believe that he just kind of threw me there. Well, I want to see what's inside his brain as well. If I'm so uh, alive and nutritious to his brain, I want to see what's inside his brain that decided to throw me there. Oh, the first step I get in, and the second things I found, well, there are two brains. I think there are two brains in this gentleman's brain. One is left, one is right. So I want to see why he threw me there would be okay. Now the left, the left brain was there and the right brain was nothing was right. So I don't believe his judgment that threw me there is, and nothing was okay in his brain. I would like to say that I wanted to see that he needs me to broccoli and to nutrition everybody in his, in his body. But I just want to see, okay, what makes him to make a decision. And I found out nothing is right in his side his brain. Thank you very much. See, to, <laughs> sorry about thank that. you, Sandy. <laughs> no worries, Sandy. You made a good story that broccoli got into his brain to find why broccoli has been trashed in the dustbin. So, so do we have any next? Speakers to continue this story. The broccoli now inside the brain. So who who gonna continue? Vivian, are you want to try it? Actually, I'd like to wrap it up instead of continuing the story. Oh, let's see. Mm -hmm. So Vivian, I. I put you at the last so mm -hmm. that you can wrap up the story. So, but I'm afraid okay. I may not be able to make it like one minute. Can it be short, shorter than one minute? Is it okay? Sure, it's okay. Don't worry. Because I'm not that creative, to be honest. <laughs> Don't worry. It's okay. No worry. Okay. So, so anyone next after Sandy? Uh, I think I think uh, it's in the chat, right? I believe. So is it? Maybe Rati Davy, would you like to try? Rati Davy. She's not there. How about Edward? Edward Yang. Edward, fast join. The broccoli inside the brain already. Either they want to start a war. Either they want to damage the brain or either the brain. To... Sorry. So, Patricia, do you want to, Patricia Tay, do you want to try it? <laughs> All right, I'll go for it. Thank you, Patricia. 
And so the broccoli and the cauliflower started yelling at each other. They say, it is your fault. You don't taste good. Broccoli said to cauliflower, you don't taste good and you're ugly, you're ugly. You see, you've got like bumps all over you. Cauliflower was furious. Cauliflower said, how about you, you green head? I think you are uglier than I am. Tomato got really angry and said, stop bickering. We're in the trash. We are in the rubbish bin now. Nobody wants us. And Peter doesn't like us. Did you see how he looked at us just now? He looked at us in disgust. I think we must try to look prettier so Peter would like us. What are you talking about? said the carrot. We're already in the dustbin. Oh, let's, let's think harder. What shall we do? Thank you. Over back to you, Table Topic Master. Sure. Thanks, Patricia. So do we have anyone next? We'll let you continue. So So in that case, Angela, do you want to do you want to test it? Do you want to try it? I hear you are very great in tail talk. Oh, sorry, talk tales. Storytelling. I hear some more rumors that Angela is great in storytelling. Indeed, I just need to pin the timer. Um... See, chilling. Could it be something so that Angela can ping you? Can you wait? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh yes, I, I I can see you. I'm not going to pin you. I I pinned you. Hooray! I'm ready to start. The only problem was, my dear friends, there were more than one trash bin. There was a green trash bin, and a blue trash bin, and a brown trash bin, and Along came the men to collect the trash bins and they looked inside and said, we can't empty this trash bin. These vegetables shouldn't be in this trash bin. There is a special bin with plastic which disintegrates bin liners, special bin liners in your kitchen. These vegetables should not be here. This is not a compost bin. And they called Peter and they said, Peter, my boy, you are very lucky that we are not finding you. Please put these things back in your kitchen and they will go in the black bin, which is what you get in Harrow in London. Well, Peter said, it's my first time here in London. I didn't know that. And they said, well, as you're a foreigner, we'll forgive you, but don't do it again. So Peter took out all the vegetables and he looked around. Where had his mother put the liners for the little black bin? He couldn't find the little black bin. And so he decided he might, well, he might have to eat one or two of the vegetables. Well, he wondered whether he could save the carrot to make a carrot cake. And the cauliflower, maybe he could have a cauliflower cheese, which was his favorite. And what else? What else? Broccoli. He didn't really fancy broccoli, but he'd heard that some vegetables would improve the soil if you put them around your potted plants. But the secret was to bury them so they don't attract fruit flies. And he was just about to do that when his mother came in. Back to you, Table Topics Master, and we'll hear what happened next. So we have a average. Do you ready? We have average next. Ah, sure, the mother, Peter. Yes, the mother just came in. Okay. Oh, continue from that point. You, you can actually elaborate anything. Don't worry. 
Okay. Madam President, Toastmaster of the evening, Topic Master for the Toastmasters and guests, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's the summer solstice, and at midnight, all vegetables come to life. The only way we can stop this is by eating our vegetables. Peter, you must eat the vegetables or our vegetables will come to life and then they will eat us. No, I don't want to be eaten by the vegetables, but I don't like eating vegetables. It's me or them, it's the night of the living vegetable. What to do? They go after my pet dog. No, they cannot have Rex. I start chumming down on the broccoli, then the cauliflower, then the carrots. But as I looked around, they are multiplying. It's me against all the vegetables. And here comes the tomato at me. I grab them, take a big bite out of him, but here comes the cabbage. I have a tomato in one hand, the cabbage in the other hand, and the sweet peppers are chopping at my heels. It's me versus the vegetables. What am I to do? I've never seen so much vegetables in my life, much less coming to life and trying to eat me. Oh, man, I should have been eating my vegetables all along, but tonight it's me or them. So yum, yum, I chum, chum all the vegetables. I can see, but more keep coming. Here comes the cucumber. Here comes the radish. Oh my, my tummy is full. What am I to do? I run and I run, but they're after me. They're after me. I trip and fell, but I am near a tree. Here comes the broccoli again, jumping up my throat. I grab him, I take a bite of him as I climb the tree to escape the vegetables. As I looked up in the corner, I see on the horizon, it's dawn. It's the crack of dawn. It's going to be morning soon. And all the vegetables will return to normal. It will be the end of the salsas. I must start eating my vegetables to keep them from coming alive. Topic master. Thanks, Everett. What is an interesting story. So for those volunteers, you may like Edwards to start your own story or we can actually invite Vivian to read after the recently story. So do, do we find any volunteers to expand their story? Or else I will invite Vivian to wrap up his story. Actually, I'm quite a, like, like stuck by, <laughs> by, by this story. So maybe, maybe next time, can I? Sure, no worries. I'm Vivian, not prepared yet. Yeah, this is my first visit and I'm not prepared yet. Sorry. No worry, Vivian. So do, do you have any volunteers to share the story? So the tape, uh, the I mean, if nobody wants, I will close the table topic for today. Okay, hand over to you, Angela. Angela, you are muted. Thank you very much for that most interesting series of table topics. Now, friends, if you look, you should find a poll on your screen and you can pick from one of those five interesting speakers. We'll give you a little uh, while to do that. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, can you please get the timing first? Taima, please report the timing of the speakers. Chui Ling, we'll over to you for the time. Okay. okay. So, so right now, uh, because um, Song Yo, Shining, and Christopher, uh, you uh, uh, okay. Um, Sandy spoke two minutes, six seconds. Patricia spoke one minute, thirteen seconds. Angela spoke for two minutes, 
20 seconds. Ever spoke for two minutes, 16 seconds. That's the end of my report. Thank you. So everybody qualified by the sound of it? Yes, all That's are wonderful. qualified. So now everybody, we've had Chui Ling's announcement and we, I'm sure the speakers will be glad to know what time they were. And you can all vote. And I think we'll allow a minute or two for you to look down and choose. And don't forget, click on submit. Can you all wave if you've voted? Wave or nod if you've voted. Put your hand up if you need more time. Okay. Right, I should go back to our timer to ask on the timing for the break and the next session. Chui Ling. Chui Ling, can you tell us the timing for our break in our next session? Um. Okay, we, we project for the project speak, speeches, is it? Sorry. Yeah. No, for, for the break. The break. The break time of Chiminic. So we have a break time for Chiminic. Okay. Three minutes, huh? Okay. Three two. minutes. We have to two, dash. Two, two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Everybody yes. dash. It's enough for you to dash to the toilet and come back. <laughs> okay. No. Welcome back to the second half of our wonderful meeting with our Singapore International Dynamic Speakers. Online, always online and every week. Now for the second half of our meeting, we are going to have the prepared speeches. And we have a wonderful lineup for you. And afterwards, you will hear the evaluations. We've had some dancing around from one person to another. But our first speaker, I believe, is Sri Ram, whose evaluator is Edward Young. And I would like to invite Edward to introduce us to the project. The, the presentation today, the speech today, will the purpose of the speech today is for the member to introduce or review strategies for working in a collaborative group. The purpose of the speech is for the member to share some aspect of his or her experience practicing collaboration with small team. The member will deliver a well-organized speech about his or her collaborative experience. The speech may be humorous, informational, or any type the member chooses. The speech should not be a report on content of successful collaboration project. The speech title, Together Everyone Achieves More. Together Everyone Achieves More. Thank you very much, Edward. Before we go on to our speaker, I'd like to tell you something about him. He is a distinguished Toastmaster, which involves quite a lot of extra work on top of everything the rest of us do. He is an engineer by profession, a flautist, that's man who plays a flute, by passion, a speaker by conviction. He is the vice president of education of Wampoa Toastmasters Club from now until next year, the head of training for Division 80 program quality team for the same period, President's Distinguished Division U Director, that was in 2018 to 19, 
Division Director of the Year for the entire District 80. President's Distinguished Area G4 Director 2016 and Area Director of the Year for the entire District 80. My goodness, we've got a top speaker here. Really looking forward to the speech. Over to you, Sriram. Uh, thank you, Angela, for the kind introduction. I'd like to share my screen and quickly set up uh, my things. Oh, sorry, sorry, what's the timing? Timing is five to seven minutes early each way. The standard sequence. Okay, thank you. Yep. Are you all able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Together, everyone achieves more. What a powerful expansion of the work team. Always this expansion used to fascinate me like anything especially when I worked on a life-changing project for my cousin. I was part of an amazing team that delivered great success. Let me quickly jump you through what was the project all about, what we did and what we gained. Somebody might have lost something. Who cares? We gained. My cousin, can you see this uh, laughing guy? Always chirpy and he'll just go everywhere and you know try to hit on every girl. His motto is, I'm single, ready to mingle. So I won't get married. One day my aunt just knocked his head. Better you mend your ways. You need to get married. And I'll make sure that you get what I seek for you. That's how in Indian systems, Mostly, the arranged marriage is work. And precisely, that's the project I'm going to talk about. How my cousin got hitched and how we collaborated as a team to accomplish that. As they say in the alchemist novel, right? The entire universe in the form of us was conspiring to get my cousin hitched. So the project begins. That chirpy guy, now he is going to go uh, transformation, transformation of life. Uh-huh. So here's the team. The team had recruits of all sizes and structures. I mean an experience. Everyone had a unique quality that they brought with them. Their gossip network or their uh, uh, database to the available girls, the number of parties they are attending so that they could form a big sample set from which a suitable bride of their choice can be chosen for my cousin. And I was part of it. I was given the task of very clearly defined task. You know, it's very important in team collaboration. Everyone should be given a clearly defined role. Everyone's experience should be respected. And I was uh, given a role to spy on my cousin because I had three qualifications. He was very close to me. I knew his darkest secrets and I could facilitate them to achieve in their mission. And I was like a very lovable boy of this gang. So the team was ready. The milestones were set and all the deadlines were clearly discussed. The frequency of meeting was every Friday. It was not like SGI Toastmasters, huh? every night you meet for meeting. It was 4 p.m. tea time capo, which is actually gossip, where they used to discuss their knowledge and check the roster list for availability matrix. Who is available? Who is seeing who? Who is not seeing who? Who can be made to see who? All those logistics were intelligently with a tinge of intellectuality covered in its entirety. The aunties made a clear expectations set. 
whenever they find that any of us have even slightest of ambitions so they will always project that it's very difficult to match for this guy heart of hearts they know they can win so this leader auntie was very clear she gave the timelines when my cousin is coming from us while going he has to take someone and dependent visa to us back the project begins and the journey was set so the collaboration start starting from every friday meetings religious notes taking and uh, what all things can be done to break my cousin's will was cleverly planned and during this process my task was whenever they are uh, ganging up i should bring him so my cousin came and i took him to a wedding and one auntie comes it's all everything well planned script okay scripted no but poor fellow he didn't know he was just sitting like this as shown in the picture as if he doesn't know anything and then they ask hey when are you going to get married this like ah, i'm just i have finished my master and i'm happy then the second candidate the scripted speaker came and said oh the boys like him cannot get married nobody will choose him just to break his mental strength and i was playing flute to it i am a flautist you know as angela introduced i said clearly see aunties are telling right once you hit 30 your market share uh, and your uh, popularity in the market dips by 50% that's it that did the magic the timeline for 6 months was successfully reduced to 4 and a half months now he has a 4 and a half month baby after one year of marriage in fact they celebrated their wedding anniversary as three poor thing not even one anniversary as couple so success was delivered all's well that ends well what are the three major takeaways from this team collaboration first everyone should have a clearly defined role that was very crucial for the success of the project especially reducing the time frame of success from 6 months to 4 and a half months it's no joke second thing everyone's expertise should be tapped and everyone should be given a say even though the gossip meeting for was for one hour and it always overrun as a practice for two hours with extra samosas uh, and uh, beverages being served of course sponsored by my mother that's okay but the project should be clearly focused and everyone should have a say and third thing we should collectively think about the success failure should be something that should never be in our dictionary with this thought if we go and approach any project our team will always succeed thank you for the opportunity friends angela you will put so contestant from hong kong north and contestant from another device no more ah huh? <laughs> no 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 <laughs> You are muted Angela we can hear you Oh I was just telling everyone else to mute if they're not speaking Thank you very much for that wonderful speech and uh, please a big round of applause for our speaker uh, we all enjoyed that very much indeed We are now moving on to our next speaker I believe that will be Kanan and his evaluator will be Lee Buckley and i would like to ask lee to explain the project and the speech so we can know all about it for those of you who don't already know lee lee is the person you'll speak to if you want to join this lovely club and she lives in australia she oh i don't know where to start describing her she, she is um she's brilliant <laughs> Let me pass you over to Lee and she will introduce Kanan. Thank you. Thank you Madam Toastmaster of the day. A very invigorating and incredible Friday to fellow Toastmasters and guests. The project that Kanan will be 
speaking tonight is connect with storytelling. The purpose of this project is for Kanan to practice using a story within a speech or give a speech that is a story. And the timing is five to seven minutes. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster of the day. Thank you. I should have reminded our previous speaker to pin the timer. Kanan, can you make sure you pin the timer and remember the word of the day is incredible. I'm looking forward to your incredible speech. Please, everybody, give a warm, but you're welcome to Kanan. Thank you, our incredible Toastmaster of the day. Our Toastmaster of the day just now told she could not find any words to introduce our Vice President Lee Buckley. I am going to say, she is an amazing, incredible vice president of membership from Australia. Having told them, hello Toastmasters and welcome guests. Sometime in 1940s, one of the blue moon day, the moon came very close to the earth and hit some portion of the earth. If you have lived during that time, you might have heard that explosion sound like an atom bomb. During that explosion, a demon jumped from that blue moon to our earth. The demon was so huge, like a mountain. His stomach was as big as a big drum. His legs were so tall like palm trees, the demon went to the nearby villages to find his food. When he walked, he made a sound like Whoo! at the top of the voice. He walked fast so he could smash many animals under his feet. He used to eat his Sorry, he used to eat so many cows one by one, just swallowing one by one like this. He liked the chicken that laid colored eggs. He plucked the flowers and swallowed the chicken in dozens. He ate all the animals first and then people. If you pick an animal and smack the neck with his teeth, and eat it in one gulp. My grandpa had seen this demon and he used to tell me stories about this demon. People used to get frightened often when they see him or hear the sound. Ooh. He generally ate his food and slept until next day. When he finished eating, he would beat his chest like this. Then the people and animal would relax. As indicated, they were safe for the day. One day, in a village where the demon visited, all the villagers had the courage to meet him. They requested the demon not to kill the animals or the people. They said to him, every day we will send few cows, chicken, turkeys, fish, and one human so that you can eat and be happy. The demon replied, all right, all right, but do not miss even a single day. I can't starve. So every day, the villagers were sending the food in a truck to the demon, and he was happily eating and sleeping. One day, it was a young boy's turn to take the food to the demon. This young boy was not afraid. He's an incredible kid. He carried all the cows, chicken, and fish. When the demon finished eating all the animals, 
the boy told the lemon, you can eat me only if you could win the contest. The boy said, if he wins the contest, he can stay. But if the boys win the contest, the demon must leave the village. The demon did not like to participate in any of the contest. He doesn't want to compete. He wants to eat and sleep. But the boy would tell the world that the demon was a coward and a fool. So the demon accepted the challenge. Okay, tell me the contest and I will win, I will eat you, and I can be happy. The contest was very simple. The boy said to the demon, I need to spell your name and you need to spell my name. If you win, you can eat me alive and you can be happy in this village. But if you lose, you need to leave the village. Ha! Ah, very simple, the demon thought. Okay, boy, you spell my name. Okay, boy spelled D-E-M-O-N, demon. Demon said, correct. Now you tell me your name and I will spell that. The boy said, okay, my name is Sankara Narayana Subramanian. What? I will tell you once again. Sankara Narayana Subramanian. Is that your name? Yes. Now spell it out or accept the defeat. Fellow Toastmasters, to cut the story short, the demon could not spell the boy's name and accepted the defeat and left the village. All the villagers were very happy. Villagers asked the boy, how did you get this idea? The boy replied, there is a Toastmaster organization in Singapore. It is called Singapore Dynamic Speakers, where everybody supports each other. They can improve grammar, speaking skills, and leadership skills. There is an incredible lady by name, Angela Lansbury, who correct our English. She helps us to speak correct grammar. You all need to enroll in Singapore Dynamics Speakers Toastmasters so that we all can be better. All the villagers agreed. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster of the day. Thank you very much, Kanan, for that very amusing story. We, we want to bring down the key to keep our members yes, but we must first determine what kind of... we've, we've got the demons speaking to us. Thank Is that you. sorry? I didn't get that. Um, we, that was most amusing, Kanan. Thank you. Thank Those you. You who don't already know Kanan will probably want to get to know him better now. He lives in the USA with his wife and his son, who is at a very prestigious, what is it, a, a hospital or research hospital. So, and Kanan himself is a very educated, erudite man, as you can tell, as well as being creative, humorous, and uh, anthology teller of tales. We will now move on to our third speaker, Patricia. Patricia, the wonderful lady who designed the backgrounds for us, a very technical lady as well as a creative lady. But before we go on to her speech, I'd like to hear from Tony Tan, who's her evaluator, and I hope he's got her project and her speech and maybe even the title to tell us so we can be ready to hear. Over to you, Tony. Please unmute yourself. Thank you, Angela. Good evening to everyone, especially to Patricia. Um, the purpose of this project is for you to practice delivering social speeches in front of club members. The timing will be three to four minutes. All the best to you, Patricia. Thank you, Tony. 
And thank you, Toastmaster of the Day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all fellow Toastmasters and guests from all over the world. It is incredible to come in here week after week to meet up with you all. This club is made possible by the dedication of its members. On this note, I would like to thank our immediate past president, distinguished Toastmaster, Willie Lo, for his hard work and dedication. DTM Willie really is a change of catalyst. Catalyst for change. And he had set up this 100% online club even before COVID-19 pandemic forced everyone else to go online. His hard work and dedication did not go unnoticed. Our current club president, distinguished Toastmaster, Alicia Chia, she is a happy-go-lucky person. But do not be fooled. She is very serious when it comes to the matters of the club. Her vision is to grow the club by having more members, but she knows that is not enough. She wants to develop each one of us to be more confident and more competent speakers. We have our VPE and VPM, Toastmaster Jennifer Lim and distinguished Toastmaster Lee Buckley. They are so dedicated too and had taken up their roles readily. These two ladies are well respected, yet they remain so humble. They have deep knowledge, good experience, and strong passion. I believe many of you would agree with me that they are such good role models for us all. We also have other EXCO members, our secretary, Toastmaster Lim Chang Jing, our sergeant at arms, Toastmaster Peter Chong, and also our club advisor, distinguished Toastmaster Patricia Lam. They have all worked tirelessly for this club and they made their efforts seem so effortless because of their love for this club. The rest of the members, you have been incredible. You come in here week after week to deliver your impromptu speeches and your prepared speeches. Your enthusiasm is infectious. And really, if there is an award for the best attendance and highest participation, that award should go to distinguished Toastmaster Kanan Sankara and Toastmaster Angela Lansbury. Thank you so much for all your contributions and for taking up all the roles. And to our guests, you are so welcome here. I urge you to make a decision today to join us as a member of this incredible club. Would you all raise your glass? We will make a toast and celebrate the success ahead of us. Come on, everyone, turn on your video, raise your glass, unmute yourselves, and we will say cheers to the success ahead of us. Cheers. 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 Dancing. Yeah. Dancing. Thank you. And back to you, Toastmaster of the evening. Thank you very much, Patricia. That's wonderful. Patricia has done my job for me, giving you all details of all the players in our lovely club who have contributed so much to our continuing success. I think we're now going to have a break so that our evaluators can quickly write up their evaluations. I'd like to ask Jennifer to tell us how long we can have our break for. Five minutes. Five minutes. Right, you've got five minutes. Do you need timers report? Oh yes, let's have a timers report and the, the vote. Before we hear the evaluations, it's always good to vote, make your own decision on who spoke the best. So let's hear from Chui Ling if they were all in time and can be voted for. 
Here's the report. Sivan spoke for 7 minutes, 26 seconds. Kanan spoke for 7 minutes, 22 seconds. Patricia spoke for 3 minutes, 30 seconds. Back to you, Toastmaster of the evening. Thank you. By my calculation, they're all within time. Am I right? Going, going, gone? Yes. Yes. So we can vote for whoever was your favourite. The poll is up on your screen. Please vote now. Can you wave when you've voted? Now lift your hand if you're still struggling to vote. Very well, you now have five minutes to rush out, fill your glass again, and then come back to hear the evaluations of those interesting speeches off and out, but you can stay and chat if you wish to. I'm enjoying my drink. <laughs> Thanks to Patricia. And this is real, huh? It's, it's, it's not fake, huh? Oh, we're having our break now, right? Yes. I think the recording is still on. <laughs> Welcome back to our continuing meeting. We will now hear the evaluations. I'm sure you've been looking forward to this. We will start with the evaluation of Sriram's speech. And this will be by Edward Young. And you've already heard him in table topics and you know how interesting and entertaining he is. Over to you, Edward. Thank you, Toastmaster of the Evening. This speech was quite entertaining and informal. I was engrossed in the storytelling aspect of this presentation. I wanted to know how the ladies man got married, what the team did, how the team came together, how the team worked and colluded to find him a wife. I was in trial in this presentation. It was excellently presented. Sharon? Sharon? Uh, Sridham. Sridham. Yeah. Apologies. <laughs> yes, you did an excellent job. I personally com um, compliment you on the way you spoke your voice projected well i understood you clearly excellent job on your vocal variety i love that you presented with confidence there was no sign of nervousness in your presentation you told the story excellently i personally like that you engage the audience. You made sure that we were in trial in your presentation in that, you see this guy, this fun, lo fun loving guy, this happy go lucky guy, look at him sitting here puzzled as if he doesn't know what was happening. Yes, you, 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 you put us in the story. You made us feel that though we were part there. I commend you for that excellent job on the storytelling. What you may want to work on is your hand gestures. At times, they were repetitive. Take for a moment when you said the time frame went from six months to four months to four and a half months. You could have showed us six months, number six on your finger, and then four. You could have done that with your hand gestures as opposed to just speaking with your hands randomly. That is my challenge for you to work on your gestures. Also, throughout your presentation, it looks as though you were looking up to the left as opposed to straight ahead at your audience. Those, those are my challenges for you to 
look straight at the audience. You may have been looking at a projector or a monitor, but try to look straight at the audience. That's my challenge for you. On your vocal, on your clarity, I scored you a four. That's language. Spoken language is clear and easily understood. I gave you a four on vocal variety, tone, speed, volume. I gave you a five. Eye contact, I gave you a four. Gestures, I gave you a four. Audience awareness, I gave you a five. Comfort level, I gave you a five. Interest, I gave you a five as well. And topic, I gave you a four. An excellent presentation. Siran, I keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Edward. Well, thank you, Edward. Please, a round of applause. That was such a thorough evaluation, telling us all the detailed scores. Most interesting. Thank you very much for that. We are now moving on to Lee Buckley, who will be evaluating Canan's speech. Canan, I would like to inform you, has completed all the pathways, not once, but twice. However, Lee Buckley is in charge of many students over in Australia, and she loves and organizes karaoke. Is she going to give a singing, all singing, all dancing evaluation of his storytelling? We'll find out shortly. Over to you, Lee. Angela, uh, I believe trailing is a way. So, uh, trailing, are you there? Yes. Tra trailing, our timer is not ready, I believe so. Trailing? I yeah. am here. I see. Yeah. Just now your video is closed, so thanks. Okay, will all the evaluators make sure you are, have pinned the timer because we will be voting on your evaluation shortly. And with all the guests remembered, listen to the evaluation, and decide which one you thought was even better than the other two. Over to you, Lee Buckley. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster of the day. What an incredible story that Kanan shared with us tonight. Kanan used humor, descriptive words, vocal variety and gestures to tap into our emotions with an incredible tall tale that stretch beyond our imagination. Who would have thought that a big bellied demon with palm tree like legs would invade a village on a blue moon night? I love the humor and the tongue twister in telling us particularly the boy's name. Let me try. Sankara Narayan Subramaniam. Whew. What a great tongue twister that was. And I would have loved to compete with Kanan with my dancing and you know, e karaoke, but his voice was incredible in imitating the demon. A good story takes us, the audience, on a roller coaster ride. It was an entertaining speech that Kanan presented us tonight. What would have added to the story would be the roller coaster. It was entertaining and our emotions was high all the time. If he had introduced a conflict, a twist, you know, bring us down, going, oh, what's going to happen to that boy? Is the demon going to eat the boy? And then bring us back up again towards the end. And that would have ended more impact to the story. That would have given an incredible ending to the victory that the boy had. Standing up would also give him more room to gesture, to add impact to his incredible story. I understand that it's quite difficult to do so in his current environment. However, if he does have an opportunity, particularly in the tall tale contest, stand up so that when he gestures and added vocal variety, it will have more impact to us, the audience. A very good humor storyline entails the setup, the pause, and then the punchline. I would like Kanan to think about this when he presents his story next time. Add more variety to the pace and the pause. As I always say to my mentee, count your potatoes, pause, and then deliver the punchline. 
Kanan, what an incredibly entertaining story you told us tonight. I would have loved you to take the audience on a roller coaster ride by varying the emotions, introduce conflict, bring us on the roller coaster ride of up and then down and then back up again. Vary your pace, vary your vocal, and don't forget to count your potatoes. And thank you for incredibly linking your story back to the club. Well done. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster of the day. Thank you very much. A round of applause for Lee's wonderful analysis and reminder of pace. Very interesting, another interesting view. Now, we are moving on to our third speech, which was by Patricia. And I would like to welcome Tony Tan, who I've seen many times at other clubs, but now it's lovely to see him here at this club. Over to you, Tony. Thank you, Angela. Uh, before I begin, can you all hear me and see me clearly? Okay, great, thank you. Congratulations to Patricia once again. And I have two things to highlight for you today. And one is for commendation, what you have done well, and the other one is recommendation for you to improve on. First of all, I feel that uh, you have acknowledged the hard work of the ESCO members and SGI uh, by thanking each and every one of them, which is a very, very good job because uh, you acknowledge their effort, right? Second, uh, I feel that you are calm, composed, and confident speaker. You speak with energy and enthusiasm. You spread your love of speaking through your social speech. Your passion for public speaking is infectious. You let everyone know that, hey, listen, I'm going to have a social speech tonight and let's have a toast. I really love your energy. What an incredible speech. And thirdly, I feel that you have engaged the audience with your toast. And I, you know, I, I felt that it could have been better if you asked everyone to come on, raise a class on a count of three, and we say yam sing together with a longer <laughs> one. Yeah, because I think uh, some of us here are foreign to the word yam sing. So maybe you could have like, okay, let's have a toast on a count of three. We say yam sing and we can have a fun tonight. Yeah, so let me move on to the recommendation. If I may, uh, I would like to suggest to you to have a pause, right? So it could have create a much uh, impactful effect in your speech. For example, uh, when you let us know that when it comes to work, uh, Alicia is a very serious person. Pause a little bit longer, slightly longer, right? Alicia is a very serious person. Maybe you could have lower your, uh, tone, right, to emphasize the seriousness and, hey, have a slightly longer pause so that, you know, you, uh, it creates a much better uh, impact in, the, in your speech. Second of all, perhaps you, you might want to consider um, have a better conclusion when you have a social, social speech. Like, for example, uh, as we are starting the new term, new Toastmaster term, let us recognize the effort and milestone that we have achieved together as a team, as well as welcoming the new team of ESCO in a new term. So let us rise and raise our glass to say yam say and celebrate the achievement together. But all in all, I feel that, you know, you have done an amazing job. It was incredible speech tonight. I really love your energy and enthusiasm. Keep it up and all the best for your next speech. All the best to you, Patricia Tate. Thank you very much, Tony. That was excellent. Can we have a round of applause for Tony? Well, we've had three great speeches and three great evaluations. I'd now like to hear from the timer the report as to whether they were all within time and all can be voted for. Let's hear the timing from Chui Lee. Evo spoke for three minutes, 19 seconds. Lee Buckley spoke for two minutes, 49 seconds. And Tony spoke for two minutes, 51 seconds. This is the end of my report. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. So I'm right in thinking they were all within time, aren't I? Yes, all qualified. Yes. 
Thank you. So the vote is up now. Can you please all vote for who you thought was the best? Can you all wave when you've voted? Raise your hand, anyone who hasn't voted once more time. Looks like everyone has voted, that's excellent. We now have three more sections to go for, the R counter, the grammaria, and the GE. Can the R counter wave at me, please? Yeah, I'm here. Right, hello, thank you. Our wonderful Jennifer, a Jenny of all trades, is, has been listening carefully for our oohs, ahs, ers and ums. Over to you, Jennifer. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Tonight's business, for me, is incredible. Why? My business tonight is bad. But my bad business is good business. That shows speakers are mindful of the past feelers. I shall now give the report of those who have the past feelers. Peter Chong. So, six so. CJ Lim, one so. Edward Young, repeated word you. Angela, repeated word magic. Sriram, one a, uh, one uh, two a, uh, two souls. Kanan, okay. Tony Tan, ten a, uh, two yas, one so. That's the end of my incredible report for my bad business, which is good business. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you for that incredible UNR counter. I think it's now time for us to go over to Celine Go, who is the grammarian. I'm looking forward to her incredible analysis. Are you there? Celine. Yes, yes, I am. I'm Thank here. you, Angela. Business is incredibly good tonight. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> it's an easy word to use, isn't it? So thank you yes. all for using it. CJ used it about five times. Peter, I think at least once. Uh, Kanan twice. Jennifer, three times. Angela, at least twice and Lee twice. Okay, for once, I remember to acknowledge from the day. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You know, you know the saying, um, it's not what you say, but how you say it, because it's not what the audience hears, but what the audience can remember. And tonight, I can remember so many things, so many things that I heard today, tonight, and I'm going to bring them up. Uh, Mainly, okay, firstly, um, at Peter's very creative approach to table topics, I love the way he framed the story together uh, and, and allowed us to use uh, personification. I think, who was it? Sandy used personification, right? She pretended to be the broccoli. But uh, congratulations, uh, Peter, on, on a very creative approach to to uh, table topics. I think many people enjoyed it. And uh, Edward's account of uh, the night of the living vegetable, very striking imagery of the vegetables of the tomatoes coming at you, the green peppers and all that. Wow, his imagination was just running wild. And listening to him, I could almost feel like I was, you know, in, in the thrash bins you know, <laughs> together with all the vegetables. And that's what uh, a memorable speech does to you, right? It, it puts you in the story and it puts you, uh, it just carries you away with the story. Uh, Srinam, Srinam, uh, I love the way he framed his speech. 
you know, his project was team collaboration. So I expected him to come up with a topic like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> cooperating on something. But he used this very, very relatable topic that all of us love to hear about, uh, matchmaking. And he framed it in, in, in the form of a team collaboration. And he used all that, that corporate jargon, you know, like the uh, market share, network, database, availability availability matrix and it was so fun listening to him speaking about it and, and describing all the the um, how do you say the how how the aunties used to work around work around his cousin wonderful I loved it um Timeline, milestones, collaboration. And Kanan, Kanan and his story about the demon is it was quite scary the way he described how the demon swallowed the cows and ate all the animals and stamped all our animals under his feet. Fantastic descriptions. Um, so this is how you remember, I guess that's why I remember stomach as big as a drum, legs tall like palm trees. So this is what stories are about, right? You, you, you show, you don't just tell, you know, you describe and use adjectives and all that. And he did that so well, well done. Give ourselves a round of applause, all of us. Um, Patricia and our evaluators also came up with very good uh, uh, language devices. Patricia said this, make the effort seem so effortless. So it's, I don't know what you call it. Maybe it's antithesis, you know, when you, when you use parallel arrangement of words. So wonderful. And Lee Buckley said, calm your potatoes. That's the first one. First time I've heard this. It must, must be uh, unique to Australia, right? Calm your potatoes. <laughs> it's a wonderful metaphor. Uh, I let this out. Um, Peter said, eat them to defeat them. Uh, that's use of the vowels, right? Repeating the vowel sound. So wonderful. Uh, so these are all the, the, the beautiful nuggets that I picked up today. Uh, awkward use, be careful with the pronunciation. Uh, we are not so good at pronouncing words that have the letter L in it. Um, because somehow our tongue just kind of flaps about in our mouth and it doesn't curl the way it should you know when you say tall you need to curl your tongue up I think Angela would know this right tall la, 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 la. La, la, la. <laughs> um, the reason is, I think we Singaporeans we speak too fast we swallow our consonants and we don't make we don't sound out the consonants we don't enunciate the consonants so it, it tall comes like tall tall tails uh, incredible becomes incredible. Little becomes little. You know, the tongue has to uh, go up on the palate to make that sound. Um, uh, we demonstrate, demonstrate, but I'm a demon. So the vowel sound is different. Um, be careful of our singular plural. There's another very common mistake with us Singaporeans. I'm a Toastmaster, but I come from a Topayo Toastmasters club, right? You've got to enunciate the, the, the S sound. And uh, some grammatical errors, uh, past tense and present tense, you've got to be careful there as well. I was racing, someone tapped. It has to be past tense as well, right? Once upon a time, there is, should be, there was. And that's all. I'd rather remember the good, the good bits, right? Yeah. After all, it's all about, uh, Toastmasters is not an English language club, it's a communications club. And... Uh, if you want to compare accuracy and fluency, which is more important, fluency, right? Understanding one another and enjoying it. We are not native speakers. It's our second language. So the only way is to practice, 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 listen to good speeches. And, uh, uh, you know, if run through your, your scripts through, through someone in the club who can help you with grammar as well. 
Yeah. So uh, what shall I do now? I shall end with a quotation. Uh, be kinder than necessary because everyone you meet is fighting some kind of battle. So stay safe, stay sane with those masters. Thank you. Over to you, Angela. Thank you, Celine. I just noticed you have got a la 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 in Celine. A yeah. round of applause for Celine. Thank you. A lovely language evaluation. Thank you. Now, there are two more things on the list. One is the awards and the other is a general evaluation. Do I have a general evaluator? No. So we can go straight on to the awards from our esteemed president, Alicia. Over to you, Alicia, towards the end of our wonderful Friday evening. What a wonderful end of the week. It has been incredible. And you can wrap it up now. Over to you, our esteemed president, Alicia. La la la, Alicia. Thank you, Toastmaster of the Day, Angela Lansbury, for being such an incredible Toastmaster of the Day. And I'm, I'm very happy that this meeting is such an incredible chapter meeting. And I'm, we have come to this point where you must be waiting for the most exciting part of the meeting, which is the award ceremony. And who are the winners? Let me announce the winner for the best table topic. Drum rolls, please. You may switch off, switch on, and unmute yourself. <laughs> well, the best table topic speaker goes to none other than our member, Toastmaster Edward. Yeah. Congratulations, Edward. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And next, all right. Our VPPR has come out with a certificate. Edward, please position yourself so that they can take your photo. Smile. All right, thank you, Edward. Well done. We enjoyed your very uh, tall tale humorous uh, speech. Next up, let's have the drum roll again for the best prepared speaker. The winner is our guest today, DTM Shriram. Shriram, can you switch on your video? Yeah. We present thank you, you thank the you, award. Alicia. Thank you. Uh, just wait a while while your award is coming out. Just give me a minute. Is the award ready? Zoom Master, can you please give host to Patricia Tay so that she can present the award? Thank you. Patricia, do you have anything? Patricia, is the word ready? You all shall not use spotlight. That's the reason why Patricia cannot be. She got the course. Got somebody do spotlight. That's why the P does not work anymore. I will remove the P. All remove right. So can, can she come? Can the certificate, certificate be up, please? Thank you, Zoom Master. I'm not... I'm not holding the certificate. Who is holding the certificate? Patricia Tay. So you are. All right, never mind. Uh, we just take photo for Shiram.
Okay, Patricia, you can take a photo for him first. Smile. Dan, I have print screen the All photo. right, thank you, Shirin. We will send you your certificate. I'm so sorry. It's all right, no worries. no worries. No worries. No worries. It's okay. Okay. Can I can I do it again for Sriram? Okay, okay, sure. Somehow the screen went missing. So sorry about okay, that. Okay, no worries. Okay. Um, okay. Where is let me try? Okay, Sriram, give your handsome smile, please. Thank you. Oh, I don't know why. He's oh, okay. Something is. Yeah, I don't know why I can't find Sri Ram. Okay, sorry, sorry, Sri Ram, where are you? Can I'm I spotlight Sri Ram? Don't spotlight, don't spotlight. Don't Otherwise, spotlight. you have an issue. Okay, yeah, don't spotlight. Thank you. Then I will pin him. In that case, I will pin Sri Ram and I will uh, try and... Oh, I, I still can't. Okay. Oh, yes, I can do it now. Let me just put this on full screen. Full screen mode. Mm. Okay, let me let me just try this. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Sriram, for being so so patient. Okay. Yep. One, two, let me give me this again. Okay. One, two, three, smile. All right, thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Okay, the final winner is for the Best Evaluator Award. Please have the final drum roll. Our Best Evaluator goes to DTM Lee Butley. Yeah, it doesn't work. Patricia, uh, should we actually take Lee photo so that we can crop together later on? Yeah, can you help me? Take her photo. I've prepared her cert, but something's happening to my computer. I can't see. Okay, no worries, sure. no worries. We just take her photo first. Lee, Thank you. can you give us your winning smile? Again, I'll hold on Lee just a moment. So let me click the print screen button. Yeah, nice. Thanks, Lee. All right. Uh, before I do my closing speech, I would like to thank our visiting Toastmasters, our grammarian, Celine, and Tony Tan. Uh, Peter Chong, can you help us to zoom in three of us so that uh, you can take a screenshot for us? Tony might have left. Oh, has he left? Yeah, I don't see him. Okay, there. Celine is around, so maybe you can pin both of us and then take a photo for, for memory's sake. Sure, just Thank a moment. You. Pin and just you and Celine, right? Yes, me and Celine, that's all. Thank you. Okay, a moment. One, two, three, smile. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Okay, Cinderella has to go home now. Cinderella wants to go to bed. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Celine. Thank you so right. much for staying with us. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm trying to stop myself from yawning. Oh. <laughs> right, thank you, Celine, for visiting our club. And I would like to thank everyone here for making this chapter meeting what an incredible night. First, we had a tall tales uh, workshop followed by our interesting and creative table topic segment. And also the speeches were also pretty interesting stories, real life stories and fake stories. The demon and the boy. So, I hope everyone has learned 
picked up skills on tall tales and we hope you can practice you have practiced enough so that we will see you in the contest soon more details will be released and thank you and wishing everyone a safe trip back home stay safe stay healthy thank you thank you thank you celine thank you bye night night